Tupolev TU-160 White Swan The NATO-designated Blackjack, or TU-160 White Swan, is a Soviet supersonic variable sweep-wing heavy strategic bomber designed by Tupolev to use in the Soviet Union in the 1980s. The aircraft was the last bomber designed by the nation but still used by Russian forces. To this day, White Swan is the world's largest and heaviest Mach 2 capable supersonic bomber ever produced. The first supersonic bombers employed by the Soviet Union were launched in 1967. But the Soviet Air Force quickly realized that an aircraft with variable wing geometry could be much faster than a strategic bomber with a conventional wing design. When details of the American development of the Rockwell B-1 Lancer were leaked, the Soviet Air Force rapidly launched a competition to develop a variable geometry bomber capable of Mach 2 speeds to counter the American aircraft. Tupolev submitted its prototype design named Aircraft 160M and it was accepted by the committee. The result was the Tu-160, the USSR's first variable geometry heavy bomber. Although the Tu-160 was similar to the American B-1 Lancer, it was by no means a copycat version. The Tu-160 was considered a strategic missile carrier, and it was larger and faster than its counterpart. However, the B-1 had more payload and included defensive armament that the Tu-160 completely lacked. More importantly, the Tu-160 was painted with anti-flash white, hence the Russian nickname White Swan. The aircraft had a length of 54 meters, a wingspan of 55 meters, and an approximate height of 13 meters. While empty, White Swan weighed 110,000 kilograms and fully loaded over 270,000 kilograms. Its two internal bays had a capacity for 45,000 kilograms of payload. Each rotary launcher could hold up to six Reduga KH-55SM cruise missiles or 12 AS-16 kickback short-range nuclear missiles. In addition, it could carry a maximum crew of four, including the pilot, co-pilot, defensive systems officer, and bombardier. The maximum speed registered for the White Swan was 2,220 kilometers per hour, or Mach 2.05, while its practical range was 12,300 kilometers carrying six missiles. The Tu-160 entered service in April of 1987 and set several flight records in its weight class. 35 were built before Boris Yeltsin stopped production. After the Soviet Union was dissolved, the Tu-160 bombers were shelved. Still, in 2007, President Vladimir Putin announced that Russia would resume production of the strategic bomber. The following year, two white swans landed in Venezuela when tensions with the United States were rising. As of 2021, the Tu-160 has received numerous overhauls to keep it up to date with more modern aircraft. The Tu-160M2, an improved version with more destructive capabilities, is expected to launch in 2023. T-90 Battle Tank The T-90 is one of Russia's most iconic and lethal tanks. It's an improved version of the T-72, which embodied the cheap and effective Soviet design philosophy. Over 1,500 T-90 tanks of different variants are currently in service in the Russian Armed Forces, and it's regarded as one of the best battle tanks ever produced. The origins of the legendary T-90 can be traced back to the Soviet era, when the USSR began looking for an eventual replacement of the T-54, T-72, and T-80 series of tanks. Out of them, the T-72 was selected as the foundation for the next generation tank. This was due to its cost-effectiveness, automotive qualities, and engineering simplicity. The Kartsev Venediktov Design Bureau was tasked with developing these improved yet new iteration tanks. The focus of the designers was to significantly enhance the armor, hull, turret, and power plant. The first prototypes were delivered in 1988 and entered service in 1992. They were officially named T-90 to distinguish them from the T-72 generation. The main armament of the T-90 consists of a 125mm smoothbore tank gun that can fire high-explosive anti-tank explosives, explosive fragmentation ammunition, armor-piercing or dart ammunition, and reflex-guided missiles. 
the minimum range for the gun is 3,000 meters. Secondary armament comprises a 12.7 mm remotely controlled anti-aircraft machine gun and a PKMT 7.62 mm coaxial machine gun. Its armament is fed by an automatic loader that reduces the tank crew to commander, driver, and gunner. All T-90s are fitted with three tiers of protective armor, including composite armor, explosive reactive armor, and a Stora-1 countermeasures suite. Other protection is provided by smoke screens, electronic defense systems, and nuclear, biological, and chemical protection equipment. The T-90 was deployed for combat in Syria and Ukraine. There are currently more than eight variants in active use. These range from tanks with additional armor, faster engines, mine sweeping, and armored recovery. The Colossus has also been sold in significant quantities to Armenia, Algeria, India, Iraq, Vietnam, Yemen, and Venezuela. Borei class Dolgoruki submarine. The Borei class is a Russian fourth generation nuclear powered missile submarine. The Russian Navy expected to eventually replace all Cold War era Typhoon class and Delta III submarines. Despite being smaller and having a reduced crew, the Beret is twice as powerful and lethal as its predecessors. Sources consider the Beret the first submarine class to be developed by Russia since the fall of the Soviet Union. Originally designated Project 935, preliminary studies of the Beret began in the 1980s alongside the R-39 Bark submarine ballistic missile that it was going to use as armament. Construction of the first Beret class submarine commenced in 1996 and the project's name was changed to Project 955 as the Navy replaced the Bark missile for the Bulava, or SLBM. The Rubin Design Bureau built the first Beret at the Sepmash shipyard in Severodvinsk. It was delivered in 2007 under the name Yuri Dolgoruki and valued at more than $700 million. After trials, the nuclear-powered submarine was integrated into the Russian Pacific Fleet in 2010. Several improved versions soon followed, including the Alexander Nevsky and the Vladimir Monomach. Besides its state-of-the-art technology and nuclear reactor, the Beret has built a strong reputation in the West because of its armament. The Bulava, standing 12 meters long and 2.1 meters thick, weighs around 36 tons. It has a range of 10,000 kilometers and can carry 6 to 10 Mirved warheads with an estimated yield of more than 120 kilotons each. Beret submarines can carry up to 16 of these warheads and more than six SSN-15 anti-ship missiles. Fully armored, a Beret can weigh up to 24,000 tons when submerged. The submarine's length is 170 meters and its beam is 13 meters long. The range is unlimited and the average speed when submerged can reach up to 66 kilometers per hour. In addition, it needs 107 crew members to effectively maneuver it. The submarine's maximum registered depth stands at 950 meters. And in 2013, Russia deployed these nuclear submarines in the world's southern seas after an absence of 20 years. Kirov-class Sea Eagle battlecruiser. Project 1144 Orlan, or Sea Eagle, was the Soviet codename for a series of nuclear-powered guided missile cruisers called the Kirov-class battlecruisers, or BALCOM, by NATO forces. First built by the Soviet Navy, the Kirov-class missile cruisers are the heaviest and largest surface warships ever built. The battlecruisers' appearance in the seas led the U.S. Navy to recommission the Iowa-class battleships to intercept them in case of conflict. The leadership of this class was laid down in 1973 and commissioned in 1980. It was initially equipped with 20 SSN-19 shipwreck missiles mounted in the deck, 12 octuple S-300F launchers with over 100 missiles, and two OSAMA batteries with 20 missiles. Future iterations of the Kirov class would include more armament, such as 130mm AK-130 gun systems, 100mm guns, and 533mm torpedo tubes. To this day, the Soviet Navy is analyzing the possibilities of incorporating hypersonic missiles into its Kirov cruisers still in use. Miel Mi-28 Havoc Anti-Armor Helicopter
The Mil Mi-28, or NATO-designated Havoc, is a Russian all-weather attack helicopter fit for anti-armor combat. Equipped with one gun, it was created to destroy any armored vehicle that refused to retreat in the battlefield of the Cold War era. Following the launch of the Mil Mi-24 helicopter gunship, the Soviet Army began to seek another helicopter that was lighter and more mobile than its predecessor. Loosely based on the Lockheed AH-56 Cheyenne helicopter, a preliminary design was approved in early 1980. The first prototype then flew in 1982 and was quickly followed by the other three. However, it would not be until 1988 that the Mil Mi-28, as we know it today, flew for the first time, and it then debuted at the Paris Air Show in 1989. The Mil Mi-28 received enough attention that other prototypes with different capabilities were soon approved. Still, it was overshadowed by other choppers until 2003, when the Russian Air Force announced that the Mi-28 would become one of the two standard helicopters employed by the military. Its design is based on the standard pod and boom configuration, with the tail rotor and X-shaped blades. However, the Mi-28 has a unique compartment for carrying three passengers besides its two pilots. Its chin-mounted NPPU 28 30mm autocannon allows for a rate of fire of up to 800 rounds per minute to easily tear through any ground or airborne vehicles between 1,000 to 2,000 meters. Ammunition can range from armor-piercing rounds to high explosive, and to strengthen the helicopter's anti-armor role, it can carry up to 16 Ataka anti-tank missiles split between two wrecks. Rockets are carried on four pylons under the stub wings. This can be either guided or unguided with their respective ammunition variations. The Russian military is currently working on further improving the Mi-28's armament to continue using it for years to come. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of these powerful Russian weapons.